now on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. O'Connor and Company. 607, first day of November. Thanks for joining us here on O'Connor and Company. We're going to get you where you need to go. You might even be a little smarter and happier by the end of it. <laughs> Coming up at 635, Cal Thomas will join us. 705, Ann Miller, mother of a uh, young freshman in high school, football player, guy, who is now forced to share a bathroom with a girl. Locker room, in fact. 735, Amy Riccardi running for school board in Loudoun County. Maybe she'll fix that problem. 835, Adam Credo of Washington Free Beacon. Talk about the... Uh, Plan to put some Iran sanctions. I thought we had sanctions on Iran. That's so. Actually, we do have sanctions on Iran. Uh, the president is just ignoring them. Right. Because reasons and stuff. He loves Iran. Yeah. That's Julie Gunlock. I'm Larry O'Connor, and we're joined now by Sean Kennedy, Virginians for Safe Communities. I mentioned earlier, Sean, actually, real fast, because I know that you're focused, hyper-focused on the crime problem, I said, I was shocked this morning waking up and not seeing a whole blotter full of violent crime on Halloween night, and I said maybe there was an increased police presence. Somebody on uh, X social media platform said, uh, yeah, first time I've seen in 14 years where I live, bike cops were patrolling the neighborhoods, and a deputy in an SUV was patrolling the neighborhood last night. So there was obviously an increased police presence last night because of the crime. It shouldn't have to be that way, Sean. We shouldn't have to have cops working overtime on Halloween night. It should be Our neighborhood should be safe enough for trick-or-treaters. Absolutely, and, and more than that, we should thank you first off for having me, yeah. but uh, – we uh, we should have consistent enforcement because the idea that we're playing whack-a-mole where we just pick a random night of the week and, and flood the zone right. is not a successful or sustainable way to enforce the law. Right. And please, nobody say anything. Tell our elected officials that every night is a trick-or-treat night. Right. And then maybe we'll fix the problem. Well, I know you'd like to begin fixing the problem in Fairfax County by getting rid of Commonwealth Attorney Steve Descano. What's the plan this election? The plan is we are running a write-in campaign for Ed Nuttall. That's N-U-T-T-A-L-L. That's two T's, two L's. And Ed is the candidate who ran as a Democrat in the Democratic primary in, uh, in June and was defeated by about eight, nine points. Uh, you know, we had a coalition of Republicans, independents, and, of course, lots of Democrats come out and support Ed there. But we were swamped. They particularly banged us on abortion because abortion is the number one issue in all prosecutors' offices in America, yeah. as you well know. <laughs> God, um, it literally and and in in Loudoun County, Buda Bibberai has a close uh, race against the uh, the former Commonwealth attorney in the early 2000s. Bob Anderson is running against her, so Buda has put out a very strong campaign. She's working her tail off. Of course, she's campaigning on the number one issue in Loudoun County for prosecutors, and that's abortion. Um, she's putting out mailers, which, of course, funded by the Working Families Party, which is funded by George Soros. And those mailers are, of course, banging on abortion because, again, the carjacking, the murders, the domestic violence, that is all second fiddle to the number one issue here in America choice, um, at least for the Democrats. So what we're doing right now is running a ride in and giving people an alternative to Steve Descano here in Fairfax. Yeah. And we just launched a five figure ad buy on Facebook and social media to promote Ed, and uh, we're getting signs out today, and uh, we're going to keep putting out the message that people have a choice here, and Ed obviously has a lot of support amongst Republicans. Not enough came out in uh, June, but they can come out now. Sean, if I can just – I think people who who maybe aren't following this closely need to understand there's no Republican alternative, right? I mean, so – I think people listening to this might go, oh, there's a Republican, and, but right in Ed Nuttall. No, 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 this is it. He's, Descano is running unopposed. So your only option is to write in Ed Nuttall. Why wasn't there a Republican? Because, you know, on Twitter, on X, rather, I'm seeing a lot of criticism. Why wasn't there a Republican? But no one wanted to, to they tried, right? The, the sort of Virginia GOP tried to find someone. And, and so it really is Ed Nuttall. Or Descano. These are the two choices. Absolutely. This is your choice. There is no alternative. I can't speak to why there wasn't an alternative but from the Republicans, but here is where we are. I mean, you got to make your decision. Do you want Steve Descano, who is running technically on the ballot unopposed, or do you want somebody who is better? Ed Nuttall is a Democrat. 
but Ed Nuttall is a law and order Democrat. He believes in what prosecutors believed in for a generation, which was that you prosecute and enforce the laws as they are. And unfortunately, we have a radical in there who, if we do not write in Ed, will win once again and will give us four more years of this sort of reign of incompetence and uh, ideology instead of doing their job. And Sean, Ed Nettle sort of paid a price for this, for challenging Steve Descano. Wasn't he recently kicked out of the Demo- the Fairfax Dems? Yeah, so Virginia doesn't have party affiliation. You're technically, everybody is independent. Sure. But you can join the party committee and you're actually a member of the party. So you signed up for the Costco club. He and his wife were good members in good standing and participated in the Democratic Party locally for years. And they basically conducted a, a trial, like some kind of Trotskyite trial, and they threw him out of the party in this kangaroo court over Zoom. Or maybe it was Teams. I apologize. There are Microsoft people. <laughs> and uh, – and, and Brian Graham, who's the chairman of the Fairfax Dems, was like, we had to do it. We had to do it because he didn't denounce the writing campaign because it was started by victims. It was actually started by oh, the parents of somebody that Steve Descano steamrolled yeah. and let the offender out for three years who hurt their daughter really badly. And the, these people started it without Ed's permission, without a thing. They just said, we need an alternative. And then <laughs> Ed, for failing to denounce it and tell these victims to go shove it, they kicked him out of the party because they told him you have to resign. <laughs> Ed said, well, I'm not going to resign. I'm not going to commit suicide so you don't have blood on your hands. And yeah. so they kicked him out of the party on a Zoom meeting. It's absurd. Well, he's better off. Honestly, Sean, I mean, the only way this uh, – to answer your question, Julie, the reason why the Republicans didn't put anybody up there is because they thought that the voters in Fairfax County were so uh, repulsed by the idea of a Republican – that they would only vote for an alternative Democrat. And mm-hmm. so they put all their eggs in that basket. Yeah. The fact of the matter is, Steve Descano is the Democratic Party in Fairfax County. That they've made their choice. This is the direction they're going. Ed Nuttall should stand up and say, I am no longer, I no longer want to be a part of this organization. I no longer want to be a part of this group because the Democratic Party has gone so far off the cliff in Fairfax. It, it Honestly, the best thing for him to do is say, you know what? You all may hate Republicans, and and my old Democrat party, I had many intellectual differences with Republicans, but now Republicans are actually the sane party in Fairfax. That's the only way we make real change. But in the meantime, we got to write him in. And and are they going to do one of these things, uh, 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 Sean, where if you don't like cross both T's and Nuttall properly, they'll discount it? It's like if you write Ed Nuttall and, and only have one L instead of two L's, Will they say, well, we're not sure who they wanted, so we're going to disqualify that ballot? Well, I want to tell your voters, N-U-T-T-A-L-L, but as long as you get the spirit of Ed's name correctly, so (laughs) Ed with one T or one L will still count. Virginia has relatively liberal write-in laws, unlike what happened in 2006 in Alaska, where if you didn't get Lisa Murkowski's name correct, perfectly, the ballot didn't count. Uh Uh-huh. By the way, Lisa Murkowski won on a write-in. Nick Friedis won in Virginia on a write-in yep. only a few years ago. Yep. Write-ins win. But we have a little more liberal here. But if you write Sheila Nuttall, because that is not the spirit of Ed Nuttall, that does not count. So that All gives right. you a sense of standard. But write-ins do win. They do win in Virginia in recent memory. Yeah. And we have a shot here. Let's because do it. people are sick and tired of this. That's right. And anybody but Descano doesn't count, sadly. I wish it did. Um, but Ed Nuttall don't write does count. Expletives. No don't expletives. Write expletives. Don't yeah. write anything Soros. Don't write any of those things down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on this All Souls Day, it's keeping for us to uh, declare our uh, fealty to the spirit of Ed Nuttall. Get that out there. N U T T A L L. Sean, thanks for joining us, sir. Always good to talk with you. Thank you. Sean Kennedy. It's 615 WMA. 